Uh, I'm currently a director of Enfield Town Football Club and I've been a director ever since Enfield Town FC Supporters Society Limited was created some 12, 13 years ago. And I was part of the team which set up the new club when Enfield Football Club effectively um, disintegrated, if you like, when we lost the ground at Southby Road. Can you tell me a bit more about what a supporter society is? A supporter society is uh, a type of cooperative movement, a type of cooperative organisation. And at the time Enfield Football Club was uh, experiencing its problems, uh, an organisation called Supporters Direct had just been established with the help of the cooperative bank and the cooperative movement. And it meant that supporters could um, become more influential in supporting a professional club, but also could run their own club. And Supporters Direct provided the technical expertise and a constitution. And then if you had sufficiently enthusiastic people, you could then do that. Mm. But it enabled you to run a football club with limited liability. One person has one share. No person can have more than one share. Have you always been a football fan? Yeah, I mean, I, I first started playing football at primary school, Lavender Road School, and then carried on. I went to for grammar school and uh, enjoyed that. Um, used to play for house teams and then sometimes for school teams. Um, and I got interested in Enfield really partly because we had a couple of teachers <coughs> who were recruited and they played for Enfield Football Club. A guy called um, Alan Burridge and a guy called Roy Cutler. And so I started coming down to watch Enfield Football Club <coughs> when I was about 11. So that's quite a few years ago now, because I'm, I'm 62 now. <laughs> so it's about 50 odd years. My, my parents uh, lived in Enfield up to Hilly Fields. And <coughs> of course, Enfield Football Club was a logical team to go and watch. But I was very fortunate because I started going in the 60s. And in those days, watching football wasn't that expensive for, for youngsters. So I, in fact, like recalling it, I'd go to Enfield Football Club one week, and I'd probably go to Spurs the other week, or even Arsenal if I was really desperate. And it, you could pay you know, out of your pocket money. Uh, you know, the train fare or the bus fare wasn't very much. So that's what I did. But the Enfield team in the 60s was great because you'd go along and your team would win virtually every week. You know, so it was a great experience. Uh, so you've been a player, yep. a fan, yep. a director, yep. and uh, anything else in between? Or just those kinds of roles? <clears throat> well, only, only really those roles because when I got to sort of 18, I went away, went away to university uh, up at Liverpool and then worked in the Northwest for a while, got married in the Northwest, and then came back south but lived in Essex. <clears throat> and so I didn't really resume being a regular supporter of Enfield Football Club until maybe 16, 17 years ago when I used to come across here from Essex, take my dad down, and we used to go and watch Enfield Football Club play. And we were watching them at the time when the ground was lost and the problems arose. So has football always been part of your life then? <clears throat> it's been a, a common theme in my life. Uh, it's not, I didn't come from a, from a family where everybody was playing football all the time. You know, my father didn't play football after he you know, started going to work and that sort of thing. So it was always at that time as uh, somebody who would, who would watch or play. So what made you get involved with the process of then taking it forward? Well, there was the experience of actually being there and that sort of slightly surreal experience that you, were, you knew you were sitting watching a game from the stand, but in a month's time, two or three months' time, that ground was going to go, it had been sold. Uh, and what was going to happen? And I felt, because of my background, professional background, had some sort of relevant legal skills. And <clears throat> After we lost the ground and we were playing at different places, at St Albans or Boreham, we talking to people and thinking, well, what, what can we do about this? And then there was a group of us, I suppose, 10, 15, I suppose, at that time. Um, we used to meet in pubs or sometimes the local council offices or somebody's flat. And we sort of took the, the idea forward and tested out whether we could actually do something. And I could play a part in that. Other people had other skills, uh, which enabled the new club to be established. It feels like a real community project, not just a football project. Well, for me, that was always an element yeah. because I, I'd always worked uh, as a lawyer in, in the public sector. I'd always wanted to be involved in the way local authorities can be in enabling communities to 
do the sort of things that they wanted to do. <clears throat> but I, I could certainly see that Enfield Football Club had been a tremendous focus for the wider community. Some of my earliest experiences, quite a small child, was being taken by uh, some of my father's friends on a special train from Gordon Hill, when my dad was a booking clerk, up to Peterborough for, I think, an FA Cup game. And there were hundreds of people there, all going off to watch the same football match, you know. <clears throat> so that was, that was one sort of thing. But the thing which we tried to do with Enfield Town Football Club right from the beginning, because remember we started as a single team, men, was to bring the ladies in with it, and then as soon as we got a, a ground and some facilities, to get the boys involved and the girls. So then you do get the community club. <clears throat> and I think at the minute we've got about 30 teams uh, playing each week as Enfield Town Football Club, and probably half those are women and girls. But that was one of the things I did, and I made sure that uh, Enfield, M what was Enfield Ladies Football Club, then became Enfield Town Ladies Football Club, and we made sure we had one of their representatives as a director from the earliest possible time. And that was a crucial thing for us, because what we needed to do, we could get a team, we could ground cheer at Brimstown, but what we really needed was the local authority support of help to provide a ground and to do that I always felt you had to demonstrate a real commitment to the wider community so we did some football in the community type projects very modest but at least it demonstrated the local authority well these group of people they they were serious it wasn't just a load of, load of blokes wanting to watch other blokes play football on a Saturday they wanted to do more than that and um, through that the local authority have been very supportive this whole project actually only happened because you approached the Beth Johnson Foundation. What made you do that? Well, I've always had an interest in, in history, although that's never been my sort of, my sort of profession. Um, but I was conscious, and I had the experience that when we set up Enfield Town Football Club, it was just a moment in time when it could be done. To run a football club, you need a whole range of skills, a whole range of commitment, a whole range of enthusiasm. And just at the time that we lost that ground, those people were still around, they were still interested. And the way in which that enthusiasm was, was able to be brought together with the help of supporters direct was something which needed to be recorded. And I was, always wanted the older history to be told as well, because I thought there was a risk of that disappearing. But for me, it was a combination. And so I, that's what I wanted to do. So I raised it with supporters direct. I tried to think about ways we could actually apply as a football club <coughs> to get the grant to, you know, to help us do it. It's very, very difficult. Um, and so partly through Supporters Direct, they gave me um, <coughs> Judy's contact details. And we took it on from there. And Judy was able to say, well, subject to this and that, we may be able to do it. <coughs> and we were able to, at the time of making the application, because of work we'd done in the community with Enfield Race Equality Council, and, and to limited extent, schools, we, it, it helped us to be able to put forward some sort of you know, reasonable sort of bid for the, uh, for the project money. Tell me about the role of being a director of a football hmm. club. Well, um, in relation to being a director of a football club, it's probably no different from being director of any other organisation. You, you do need a commitment. You do need to be able to share with the other directors a common enthusiasm, a common purpose. Mm. Now, if it's an ordinary commercial company, that may be a common enthusiasm to make lots of money for yourself and develop the business. We had a cooperative model, so we needed that sort of commitment. And so all the directors did what they did for nothing. There, were, there was no expenses for anything. It was all entirely voluntary. But any group of directors, you need to have different skills. Some people with a financial background, some people with a tax background, some people with marketing, commercial, that sort of stuff. Perhaps legal ad admin. So, so, so we had all that. Um, and we were able to, to, to gel together. We've been very fortunate that we've had just two chairmen, and Paul Millington, our current chairman, uh, I think has done an outstanding job in transforming us from you know, that, one map, that, one, that one team to bringing us here and to um, being able to... Uh, help the board of directors gel together and make sure directors pulled their weight and any director who wasn't doing that or didn't attend the meetings well over a period of time they perhaps left and others have yeah. come in and we've been able to regenerate the board so the board now is stronger in the commercial skills 
than it probably was at the beginning. And you're actually only, I think it's easy to underestimate, you've only been in this ground, you've only been this club yeah. for how long? Well, we're talking about sort of 18 months or two years. And actually, in terms of 18 months, two years, mm. are you where you wanted to be? What, what are your long-term aims for the club? Those kinds of things. Well, we're very pleased to be here. I mean, to be here within a period of time since we've established is, is a tremendous achievement. Um, I think most of the directors would hope that we could progress up the non-league pyramid uh, again to maybe reach the, the conference. And for that, we've got to win the current league, which will be a big challenge. And then we've got to win another league competition. And then you're in the, 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 the top level of the semi-professional game. If we wanted to go further than that, the model, the business model that we have would need to be slightly adapted. I think it's vital that the supporters always have the control over the ground so we can never lose the ground again. That's absolutely vital. Mm. But you can have a limited company that actually runs the football club. Do you enjoy being a director? Uh, I've certainly enjoyed being a director for the last 10 11 years. But in the last couple of years, I've moved. Mm. Um, my wife and I have moved to Oxfordshire. So it makes it more difficult. And I think it is important that directors have uh, a close proximity to everything that's going on. So for me, uh, seeing this project through is absolutely vital. But after that, I think I'll look round and I think there'll probably be other people who could do a better job as a director than me. So. Oh, how do you feel about that? Well, you've got to be realistic. As a director, you've always got to put your business first, the organisation first. And at the point you think, well, there are other people who can do a job just as well as you or better than you, well, that's the time you should sort of step back. Because there's always plenty to do in a football club. You don't have to be a director. There's millions of jobs you can do in a, in a, in a club like Enfield Town. Tell me about your major highlights and your major lowlights of the time that you've been involved in Enfield. Hmm. I'll start with the bad news first. I mean, in relation to Enfield Town Football Club, I mean, the worst thing which happened to us was to find ourselves involved in litigation in the High Court. Uh, Litigation for which um, I honestly don't think that um, we've done anything wrong. But we found ourselves uh, against somebody who was very wealthy and who was uh, able to use the, uh, the law to, to pursue a claim against us. Whereas for us it was very difficult to uh, assemble a reasonable legal defence to that. But even putting to one side the merits of the case, we actually lost the case in the High Court, which is very, very expensive. Uh, and so there was a moment in time when the club was under threat and, and some of the directors' interests were under threat. But we got over that because of the enthusiasm of our supporters and everything else. Uh, and I have to say, the person who brought that case against us was subsequently imprisoned for a number of years for um, tax-related offences for which he pleaded guilty. Um, and as part of his claim was based on the fact that he was an honest businessman, um, I think his subsequent admission proves that might not have been the case. So that's probably the worst thing, because without that, we may have made slightly more mm. rapid progression. Mm. In relation to the club itself, um, I think probably coming here is the greatest thing that we've been able to do, because it gives us so much more. Uh, it gives us uh, some security of tenure, if you like, in sort of technical terms. We've had some good fun on, 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 on the field as well. Some excitement, some tension. Uh, and certainly getting promotion to the Ryman Premier League was pretty uh, hair-raising stuff. And we had the playoff. And uh, I really thought we were going uphill, but we managed to pull that off. So can you tell me what you think the future of the club is going to be, the next 5, 10, 15 ongoing years? What would well, you I'd like to well, see? Well, I'm confident that uh, we've reached the stage where the club is attractive to both players, people who want to volunteer, and people who want to be directors. And when you're in that position, you can select the best. Uh, so I'd hope, uh, and I, I really believe, that the club would be able to move forward to uh, the conference and to do well in the conference, uh, and will show itself adaptive mm. uh, to, to what it have to, has to do to achieve that. Uh, so commercially, we'll always need to be dependent on getting good commercial sponsors, good commercial relationships 
So we'll always need that because it's very expensive to pay players to play at a level at, at, at the conference. But I'm confident that we could do that over the next uh, 10, 15 years. Tell me about the difference, the difference between being a director, being a fan, pressures, perception. Well, I suppose there's, there's one, one, one practical way. I mean, all, all the directors of Enfield Town Football Club are fans of Enfield Town Football Club and want Enfield Town Football Club to do well. Um, but early on, one of our directors who's, who was experienced in, in the administration of football clubs said that we must always keep clear the relation to playing matters, team selection, that's down to the manager. Our job as a director is to appoint the manager, so select the manager, give the manager a budget, and, make, and deliver on that budget. So you know, some clubs, the manager thinks he's going to get X pounds per, per week or month for the whole season. And Christmas time, the money runs out and oh dear, there's problems. So we have to deliver on our part of the deal. But once we've got the manager, it's down to the manager to deliver on the playing performance and be prepared to set targets for the manager. You know, we'd expect to be here by this time of the season. And if playing performance is tailing off, well, as directors, <coughs> in certain cir circumstances, you've got to take uh, a tough decision. Sum up football, Enfield Town, your experience in three words. Uh, community. Uh, friendship. Progress.